on stage Senior Board Advisor, Mr. Mark Yu, CFA. So Mr. Mark Yu is also the President of C1 Philippines and a past President of CFA Side Philippines. Let's please welcome him on stage. Training cats and dogs on stage. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys feeling? Great. Awesome. All right, come on, give a round of applause for our next speaker. The next speaker is Mr. Yu Ming Shin who is presently the Executive Director of Inventus Search Asia, which she has successfully established as a leading recruitment solutions firm in the Philippines, with highly significant hiring in top management positions covering the information technology, banking and insurance, retail and department store, consumer goods, and others. Previously, he spent an outstanding 12 years with University of Asia and the Pacific where he established a bachelor and master's program in information technology and contributed exceptionally in building world-class IT infrastructure for the highly respected university. He is highly regarded as a thought leader on issues such as career management, talent acquisition and retention, human capital and HR strategy, and ICT. He received a BS in information technology from National University of Singapore and postgraduate diploma from Wharton and the University of Asia and Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Mr. Yu Ming Chen. Choose 
and someone cannot actually answer from the floor. And I wanted to, sorry, I didn't press that. <laughs> I didn't press that. Okay, I wanted people to, to help me to think as of today, you probably heard the thunder. Okay? Okay. What is the three most pressing global issues? What are the three most pressing global issues? that the world is experiencing today. Anyone who wants to shout aloud? Anyone? What's that again? Huh? Climate change. But, yes, to a certain extent, it actually, I run climate change number three. Today, in this moment, in this past week, the number one, Global crisis is about refugee crisis. Never in the post World War II you witness such huge impacts of refugee from the Middle East to the Greater Europe. And obviously, second is the economic slowdown of China, which certainly will have a bearing in your career. Because financial management, financial discipline will become a primary competency that a lot of top executives, a lot of HR are And lastly, environment climate change. And I'd like, like to bring a global context to the local side. Okay? What, what about domestic crime? What are you thinking about after you finish this event? What you're going to encounter? I think in the top of mind, the past week, or the past two weeks, I think the biggest single concern on the local side is traffic. Okay. Second is, huh? No, I put in number three, put my perspective. Number two is corruption. I hope it's still a burning issue among the great young minds today. And lastly, 2016 election. I'm not going to canvas any early voting here, okay, but I know what are the typical new choices as well. But let me get back to the main topic. How to stand up in a very tough and competitive job market. And what I'm going to do today is to talk about what are the forces in the, in the, in the workforce that is changing the marketplace and what you need to know and to appreciate as well. Second is, what are the top employability competencies that you need to look for? You'll be surprised with the point that I will share with you. It's not technical proficiency that you're looking at. It's something very pronouncedly humanistic competency. Third, as you embark on your career in the next three months or six months, I think this is a question that you need to ask. Okay? Career is not about finding the first job. Career is about planning where you want to be in the next three years, next five years, and maybe have a perspective what you will be in the next ten years. Okay. The vision of where you want to be become very important in setting out the first job. And I like to build about a build around ten critical strategy to get stand out. And lastly, you know, how do you make a career, early career switch? If you make a mistake, what are you going to do? I'll tell you, from my 12 years working with the University of Asia Pacific and 14 years running Event Research Asia, people make career switch in their first three years quite radically. To the tune of, from our assessment, from our survey, it's probably around about 30 to 40 percent people get radical career change. I have seen a practicing board master doctor switching to become a multimedia artist. I've seen uh, a CPA pop lodger changing a career to swing healthcare. So you need to know how to make this change when you found out that the inclination is no longer shaped by our educational activity. Changing career 
we are going to do First concern is the workplace that your father's or grandfather is used to is totally different. We talk about maybe the big banks, BPI, BDO. You try to shift your mindset to how Google Office is being managed. Okay? How an Uber office is working. Okay? It's totally different. Today you don't have a a very structured, linear reporting relation. Sometimes it's very complex and cost matrix. So you have not just one boss, you have multiple bosses. Okay, you may not be managing people, you have to be a strong individual contributor. So someone who can get things done on your own and produce the result as required by your organization. And the second note is technological advances in social media. I'll tell you this, what you're going to see today, what you're going to experience today will be very different in the next months, in the next few years. There is a big talk in town that anything that can be overrides will be overrides. Down to employment, down to entertainment. So think about that. If you see A, B, and B, you see uh, vehicle sharing concept. Social media will change that radically and how business will be run in the next month and in the next few years as well. Velocity of change. Tied to technological changes, the speed of change will be perhaps close to like here. Okay? You look at the way people speak, the way people talk, and then you, and you will understand the, the pronounced speed of how the action, action will take place in the workplace will be very radical in the coming years. And lastly, last one, second to the last one, this is a very important perspective you need to know. Okay? There might be some speaker who talk about the emerging ASEAN Economic Ex Exchange Group. It's almost like a European Union. You will realize that you will not only be competing among yourself for the big jobs out there, but you'll be competing with your fellow ASEAN graduates as well. And I will tell you, in places like Sea, in, in the first world of Asia Pacific, you'll find a British taxi driver, you'll find a British construction worker today. So you will see the whole convergence of competition not coming just from your school, from your neighboring school, or the city where you're from, but a global workforce marketplace. And lastly, confluence of roles and function. You may think your job will be, will be focused primarily on financial aptitude. I'll pick you a new job that become the hottest job probably in the 20s, 20, uh, or 2015 or this year. I don't know how many of you know what a data scientist show is all about. Anyone of you know exactly what a data scientist show is all about? Or anyone of you know the big password in Silicon Valley and private equity for the venture capital today, which is very close to your field, fintech, fintech company. The role of a data scientist is a combination of finance, statistics, and IT. And that's one of the most demanded jobs. And I was surprised that uh, a person with about 12 to 18 months of fresh close to like 80 to 100,000. You combine math, finance, you pass statistics, and plus IT. You combine financial analytics with data mining, business intelligence. Okay. So, the, the, the field is changing because of the problems of industry. Okay. And this is very interesting. But let me bring you back to the LP this slide. This came out last Thursday or Friday. It says that about 10 million Filipino are jobless. And more critically, there are about 1.3 million adults who fresh graduate working for job. So it's become very important that all of us here today 
a great elevation, how do we stand out? I'm just still getting used to this delay with my pointers. Now, to get to where you want to be, to get to be a start out, you really need first very strong analytical and problem solving skill. Analytical and problem solving skill. So somebody who knows how to scope a problem and be comfortable thinking of solution to a problem. And important aspect of this, in real life, you will realize this in a personal level, relationship, and growing up, there is never a perfect solution to life. Same in the case of work. It's how you, you would wait for the right data, for the right moment. So the ability to be astute, to be able to say, this is, I have 80% of the input, do I make a decision here, do I invest? Okay, do I not invest? Do I take the risk? Do I not take the risk? Second is, be very relational savvy, what I call business organization, politics, and environment. One of the day where you can run an organization top down in an authoritarian way. One of the very important competencies that you need to develop So, as I was saying, one other day that you can run a show by commanding. And this point to the second point, which is what I call strategic influencing. Okay. You can be at the bottom of the organization, but you still have a voice in how an organization will be managed. So your ability to use this skill, what I call strategic influencing, will be very important. And obviously next, it's about communication. Okay, how well you speak, how well you uh, relate to people, how well you articulate clearly, become very important. And of course, this is a very important thing. I, 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 I felt this is very important. I dealt with very bright people, but they can decide, they can act. They can suggest, they can spell out things, but Deciding and acting become very important. And lastly, customer relation. You need the ability to, to deal with people, to serve people, a sense of service become very important in your workplace. Let me go to the next slide. Okay. I wanted to take this moment, as explained in the earlier slide, is to ask, we actually, want, we actually have a sort of an informal buyout here. Okay? to run an early stage career questionnaire. Okay. Due to some techni technicality issue with the Thomson Reuters app, we were not able to launch it. So I would like to encourage all of you to check out Eventus website. We will take time to answer about 10 to 12 questions. That will help me to help you to analyze your perspective, your thinking, what, how are you planning your career for? And obviously, you know, you just if you fill up the online questionnaire. I was there will be a small reward. Okay, we will if you fill it up, we will give you a globally uh, certified assessment tool called Workplace Reasoning Assessment. Okay, it's a global, globally established workplace reasoning tool. Okay. Now, this is a very important question that you need to ask. You are embarking on a new career. So what are you going to do? Uh, there are basically two important set of questions that you need to ask. Okay, Who is managing your career? Is it you? Is it your parents? Is it your school? Is it your future boss? Or no one? So something that you need to ask. I will tell you your career is mostly going to be influenced by one, Choice that is not clear. 
your peers, okay? as well as your part, the parents. And your parents have a big say what you need to, what you're going to do after you graduate. Right? So it's very important to know who's going to manage your career and decide, is it going to be them or you? I would suggest that you need to consider taking up more active role and stop perhaps a lot of blaming choice that were made by your parents or peers and students. And obviously, what are you doing to help prepare your career forward? So I think people always fail to understand you shouldn't be spending time looking for a job or doing your job. But I think as the onset, what you need to do is managing your career. So I want to be the top CFO of the country. I want to be the next uh, top data scientist in the country. I want to be part of a top FinTech play Silicon Valley. So those are very important career directions that you need to set. Now let me go to the 10 vital strategies to get started out. Which I pick up from Fort Myer. First, at this last stage of your college life, you need to keep all your success documents to date. So you need to be able to put all your references, successful accomplishment, very well captured, because these are important information. Use social media to capture your hot references. Second, put time aside every week for active networking. I guess this gathering here today is a form of active networking, right? So, training, exposure, and what have you. Third, join and take leadership role in appropriate association. I tell you, as early as 15 years ago, or 16 years ago, I was one of the academy members who was asked to join a proper in government leadership early management development program. And there are basically three criteria that they set out to, to hire, to pick up a student to be part of the management development program. Okay? They must excel academically. They must have been a team leader once. Secondly, this is very important. This is related to the question. Must help take on leadership role in an ex real, solid, extracurricular association. So if you have been a choir leader, that is not considered. Okay, if you have been a block head, that is not considered. That has to be a solid leadership role. And lastly, of course, you need to pass the academic exam. Then the other two points is, uh, if you can make yourself visible, if you can publish your thought, today it's so easy to share your ideas, right? You can simply put out your feeling, your thought in, in your Facebook page and what have you. Okay? Fifth, continue your career education. A couple of top people I've met were very clear when they were in third year, they said they're taking ME in Ateneo. And they were very clear they would take up maybe another major to run with it. So people are very well planned where they want to be because that will give them the edge. Next, research and the way of motivation. If you decide, let's say, if this has been a nursing uh, graduate career preparation talk, you realize you, need, you have not done enough research because the market potential, the job employment opportunity for nurses are very low. So you need to be very clear what are the competitions out there. So let's say you're going to pursue CFA, level 1, level 2, level 3. Okay? Then you say the market becomes very competitive. And can you imagine the number of brighter, smarter CFA coming from India? Okay? So you've got to understand what are the competitions out there. Next, offer to help people in your network. Okay. This is very important. Followed by look at new jobs and investigate other opportunities. I talked to you about fintech role. I talked about I talk to you about data scientists. And the next one, 
always ask yourself, how can I contribute? It's very important that voluntarism that you learn in high school day and college day should be kept and maintained because in, in organization, they look at your ability to manage, to lead organization on your stronger voluntarism. And lastly, practice, and this is the last of all. See, I didn't put this at the first. Okay? Practice, your, practice your interviewing, negotiating, and relating. That is the last. Because if you have the nine of the, the, the ten strategies I shared with you, okay, the finishing task is about how you interview, how you present yourself, how you conduct yourself in the interview. And, and as I said earlier, I will also share with you, if you make the wrong career choice, and you, you may be a lesser start out in what you do, you want to change career, I will have more suggestions for you to make. First is how to unlearn fast, and how to learn fast again, the new thing that you want. In today's context of velocity, you can do that. In a, in a social media, you can become a, a data scientist, maybe in three to six months, you can actually more and you can become you know, a hybrid career practitioner because the amount of knowledge that is available in social media is immense. I would think you've got to know the entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial is not about doing business, taking, taking a business course, but rather know how to take risks. I think it's important to realize that taking risks and fail is a normal learning curve that you need to experience in your first few years. By having that, you know how to make adjustment, you have a high level of tolerance as well. And then, this will not be adequate to highlight and emphasize. You've got to be strong in technology. Not necessarily in programming, but more in the adoption and the adaptation of technology in your workplace. You don't have to be the first, you know, but you need to know how that will change the way you work, the way you relate to people. Can you imagine if you are the HR head and you don't have Facebook, you would not be able to understand human behavior at all. Correct? And lastly, pick a good mentor Pick a good counsel, pick a good executive coach to guide you to make the change. So this is how I will share with you how you can make the early career switch. Let me go to my last, last two slides. I'm on time, right? First, I think at this point in time, you, you, you got the excitement, euphoria in you. Hey, I'm going to pack my bag, I don't have to go to school in the next three to six months, but you will realize the new workplace that you will enter could be a lot hellier, a lot more like a hell, a lot more grinding than you expect. Okay? Can you imagine, you can run a very good job as a financial analytic, the BPO company, you probably could pay a premium since you're going to look nice shit, but you were going to lose the entire social right? So here is the point, right? Never be satisfied, never be complacent, and don't ever assume you're 100% safe in your job. The only real job security is developing and maintaining your knowledge and competitiveness in the marketplace. I think in, in your profession, you constantly need to find you, sharpen your financial analytic skill, right? Am I right? And lastly, I, I don't have to say this, this has been floating in social media for the last three to four weeks, and I enjoy you to read it by yourself. This is for the former Senate of the Big World. So the company you choose affects who you become as a person. One should go with group with good values, not those for bad one. Join extracurricular activity, but prioritize academy. I love three hours for homework every day. Time management is important. Absorb knowledge by reading books. Have a positive attitude. Observe, aim high, and never settle for mediocrity. 
When you got in the UP, you were able to box someone out because of competition. Remember, every time you fail, every time you settle for mediocrity, you have committed a sin, then that's your sin. I guess this is social moral So I, I expect all of you who are here today, the 3,000 plus people here, will not commit a sin, but at least, you know, finish the final line, take on your diploma, you know, join the crazy grinding workforce. Then on that note, I close my presentation. And I, you know, if there are any raising, raising questions that you want to ask, feel free to shoot at me. Thank you.